So, I'm bald, right? Well, my friend's having this wedding, and she's telling me, I'm a bridesmaid, but the only way I can come is if I put on this blonde wig. I'm completely against it because I don't need to wear a wig. I think I'm beautiful. But guys, you will not believe what she does next. Just as a little background, I grew up in a very strict Christian family where I wasn't allowed to cut my hair, ever, because hair is a woman's crown. It was down to my knees by the time I escaped at 18 years of age. Ever since then, I've either had a pixie or a buzz cut or been totally bald because I cannot stand the heavy feeling of long hair or all the brushing, washing, detangling after dealing with it for so many years. So, that's a big reason I'm so stubborn about this issue. Also, all my friends involved in this story have always known me as the girl with long hair. Right now, I'm bald because I always shave my head completely for the summer. One of my good friends is getting married in August and she chose me to be one of her bridesmaids. Everything had been cool, she'd always been the sweetest person, and she showed no signs of going bridezilla before any of this. Until she called me up about three weeks ago and asked me if I could do her a favor and wear a wig to her wedding. She explained that she wanted all of her bridesmaids to match and that she wanted us to all look good in the pictures. I told her I really don't want a wig, and we've been on bad terms ever since. All of her friends are on her side because, quote, it's just a wig, and, quote, it's not like she's always asking you to grow out your hair for the wedding. <laughs> so, she's not the one being unreasonable. And I know I can be very stubborn sometimes, which I guess is the reason I'm posting here. The thing is, I don't know how many of you will be aware of this, but a wig that will actually look good slash realistic is expensive. I've already paid for a bridesmaid dress, new shoes, a plane ticket, as well as a small deposit for the person who's going to do our makeup. This wedding has already cost me a fortune. I could afford a wig if I wanted to, but do I really want to spend the money on something I'll never wear again when I've already spent a ton of money? Not really. Also, this is going on a plantation in Louisiana in August. I'm already going to be hot and sweaty and uncomfortable, and a wig will make things a thousand times worse. My biggest reason, and this is why my friends are saying I'm the a-hole, they're saying it's the principle of the thing. I think that, I don't know, it's implying I look bad because I don't have hair. Which I think is just not true personally, and it's being bald so hideous I'll ruin her pictures? Is she going to make her balding father wear a toupee? And I think the, I want us to match things stupid, we're already matching dresses, <laughs> isn't that enough? I know, I know, most of you will probably say it's her day, we're supposed to make her happy, but isn't there a line you draw in the sand? I've offered to wear a cute headscarf as a compromise, if my bald head is that offensive, but she's not having it. I'm still in the bridal party and invited, but I don't know for how much longer. Honestly, am I the a-hole for not wanting to wear a wig? What's up guys, Mr. Redito here, I hope you're having a fantastic day. There's a complete update for this, and man, this is a difficult story. What a horrible position OP's put into in this. I don't know, I just think it's wrong to ask someone for such a favor. Let's see exactly what's going on with this update. If you're not subscribed to the channel, just take a second right now, click that subscribe button. Here's your update. So, first of all, thank you for your replies and advice. I'm writing an update post because things ended up working out well. <laughs> and because I want people to see my friend isn't actually a horrible person, like people were saying she was. I texted her, asking if we could work things out over a phone call. We don't live in the same state, so our relationship's over phone and text. It turns out a lot of you were right, and my friend's being pressured to ask me to wear a wig. Her future mother-in-law found out about my shaved head and pitched a fit. Like I said in a comment, my friend can be a huge pushover, and this woman is apparently a nightmare. 
She's also paying for the vast majority of the wedding, so my friend felt even more beholden to what she wanted. That's why she told me she could not pay for the wig. Mother-in-law refused to. Neither of them knew how expensive a good wig can be, and my friend only found out when I told her over the phone. <laughs> That's also why our dresses, shoes, and makeup weren't covered. It turns out my friend is mortified by what she sees as her mother-in-law making her look cheap and greedy. But she did not want to tell us that because she's already embarrassed to be relying on her mother-in-law's money. Apparently, it's her fiancé's family insisting on this huge, extravagant wedding. That's why her reason did not ring true to me as well. She did not want to hurt my feelings by telling me that her mother-in-law was being so judgmental of me. So she basically blurted out the first thing that came into her head. She assured me she thinks I look great with short hair and apologized for making me think that I look bad. I know people will question how can I believe her, but I've been friends with her for a decade, and I do give her the benefit of the doubt. We've been there for each other through a lot and really care about one another. I'm still side-eyeing the plantation wedding, but I didn't tell her that because she seemed so stressed out by essentially being bullied by her fiancé's family. I just didn't want to pile more stress up. I do know for the fact that she only wanted that venue for the big oak trees, all scattered amongst the property, which are admittedly beautiful. I went to the plantation's website and noticed they have a memorial to everyone who died there, so that makes me feel slightly better. I did tell her that asking me as a mixed girl to wear a blonde wig could be seen as racially insensitive, and I explained why. She was horrified and apologized over and over sincerely. She wants to stand out from her bridesmaids in pictures, and she didn't even consider implications of asking me because most of her bridesmaids are blonde. She's kind of oblivious to things like that, but the few times I've had to point out something, she said she could be hurtful, and she's always been understanding instead of defensive. I decided I'm going to grow out my hair as much as possible for the wedding just to help her not get grief from her monster-in-law. I'll still be pretty short, so it's okay. She's fine with that, except she's worried I'll still have to deal with snide remarks from her fiancé's family. I reassured her that after nearly a decade with short hair, I've pretty much heard it all. By the time we hung up, I felt way better, not only about the wedding, but about our friendship. Alright, so let me know what you guys thought about this story. We will read a couple comments before we hop to story two. The first one had OP reply to it, and it said this. Yay, I'm so glad it's working out. Chalk one up for communication. I also think you must be a great person, and you're definitely a fantastic friend for growing your hair out for her. That's when OP replies saying this. Yeah, normally I tried to talk things out with her and clear the air ASAP. But around the time she texted me asking me to wear the wig, I had other stuff going on in my life as well. So dealing with that became low priority. It definitely reinforced why I go the route that I did. We spent two weeks annoyed at each other for no reason really, just petty. So guys, let me know your thoughts on that. I still believe it's kind of rude to make someone wear a wig, but at least they compromised in the end and everything seemed to have worked out. Now we're going to look at story number two, which comes with a complete update. Am I the a-hole for not inviting them to my Christmas party after they didn't invite me to their wedding? Guys, this is one serious mess. So... I threw a pretty big Christmas party every year going on for a decade now. A few years ago, at one, I threw my friend Tara. I met my former co-worker Tony, and well, they hit it off. They dated for a while, and two years later, once again at my Christmas party, she showed up with a ring on her finger, and they announced it. They were engaged. I was super happy for them. They got married this spring, and guys... Uh, we didn't get an invite. When I was sending around my party invitations this year, I didn't see any reason to invite them back if they didn't think I was worthy of making their guest list. 
I've known them for years, basically introduced them to each other, and they literally announced their engagement at my home. <laughs> it got back to me today that they're very upset with us for not inviting them this year, that my party is something they consider special, and they think I'm just being petty. A couple of friends mentioned it was a smaller wedding, and they feel like I'm just punishing them. It wasn't, though. There was 200 people there, and I knew at least 50 of them. And I was a little surprised at some of the names that they made the cut over us. <laughs> I didn't make a stink about it or anything, but I don't see why I should welcome them into my home again after being snubbed like that. Well, my partner thinks I should just let it go and invite them back, but I don't see a reason why I should. Guys, I need your help on this one. Am I the a-hole for not inviting them? Alright guys, Mr. Redito here. So this is a tough one. It seems that they did not get invited to the wedding when 50 other people they knew. I think that's kind of disrespectful. But hey, maybe they should ask them why they didn't get invited to the wedding. I think we can go from there. But guys, there's an update. So let's see exactly what's going on. OP says this. Dang, y'all. I never expected my post would blow up the way it did. Since I got so many requests to check back, well, here's the update. I stuck to my guns and did not invite them to my Christmas party. My partner stood by me when I told him I've made my decision and did not bring it up again. Neither did our friends. Many of you guessed that they would try and crash our party. I got worried that could happen after all responses, but thankfully it didn't. Probably a hundred plus guest who wanted to hijack the party to announce she was pregnant. <laughs> if that's the case, they haven't told anyone as far as I know. Well, they did, however, decide to try to throw their own party at the same time as ours. Several friends told us they were trying to convince them to come to theirs instead. I honestly hope they had some guests <laughs> and had a great time. I wish them no will ill, but... I think just about everyone we expected to come to our party, so I doubt they poached any guests from us. They made enough of a last minute fuss over this that the whole thing became the gossip of our party. Their doing, not mine. And I chose not to engage in it, but the consensus I heard was everyone thought it was bizarre they chose not to invite us to their wedding and that them complaining about not being invited to our party was in poor taste. I think the most common question here is, why did we not get an invite to their wedding? From what I can tell from people at our party gossiping about the situation, they've said it was because we're a little bit older than they are. I think that's weird. Since my partner and I are both 35, they're 28 and 29. It's not like we're very far apart. Tara used to hang out with us at least once a week when she was single, and I literally introduced them. The whole thing still seems strange to me, but I guess <laughs> it is what it is. So, yeah, that's how it all went down. Our party was a blast. We got to see many friends, some of which we haven't seen since COVID. Everyone had a great time. People literally brought toddlers we haven't even met yet because of how crazy the world's been over the last few years. It was a wonderful evening. I hope you all had a great Christmas holiday as we did. All right, so let's read a couple comments on this one. Props to you for standing by your initial decision. They absolutely did not deserve to be invited to your party, and I'm very glad you ended up having a great time. Yeah, also, glad to read the friend guest of OP agreed that the couple were acting in poor taste. If I were at the Christmas party, I would have tagged the absent couple in some funny party photos on Instagram to remind them of why they missed out on what they're due to their just boorish behavior. So guys, let me know your thoughts. Do you think OP was in the right to not invite the people? I say yes, because it's rude that 50 people knew and they went to the wedding, but OP did not get the invite even though they were friends. Guys, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. If you want to, it does support me a lot. All you have to do is click that subscribe button. I'm here every single day. Check out the description for the links, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Uh, peace!